Hi there, I'm Deontre Blanche and welcome to Video Trainer Interviews. This week on the show, I have Lydia Zingoli. She is the Firecracker founder and managing director of the South African Teen Entrepreneur Foundation. You'll see that they are a foundation, obviously, who focuses on instilling a culture of entrepreneurship among South African teenagers. They've done some fantastic work. They do it through a combination of workshops, programs, uh, books or ebooks that they have available on their website. It's a really good interview. Lydia gives uh, a, some wonderful tips to teen entrepreneurs. Things like how do you get finance? How do you find what you're good at? You know, what are the current opportunities for South African teenage uh, entrepreneurs? Stay tuned for the show. I know you're going to enjoy this one. Hi there, Lydia. Welcome to, to the Video Trainer interview today. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure having you here. Lydia, before we get right into the meat of this interview, I thought you might want to just tell our Video Trainer subscribers a little bit more about who you are. Uh, okay, my name is Lydia Zingoni. I'm the founder and the director of our Teen Entrepreneur Foundation, a foundation which I founded on the basis of uh, looking at young people struggling to uh, make ends meet and struggling to actually form their own businesses. And I realized that there are about 18 million of these young people. Surely, as a country, we should look at uh, formulating something which they can sort of come to and, and get information on. So, you're, uh, you are currently running as the, uh, well, you are the founder, as you said, of Teen Entrepreneur, but um, you also have quite a, an interesting background in, you know, the entrepreneurial world and also the academic world relating to, to entrepreneurship. Yes, uh, my first degree is in actually in uh, economic history, which is the study of uh, economies or a history of economies, you know, you know in most countries. So I know quite a lot of what happens in the background of economies in, in the whole world. I also have a degree in marketing, which sort of helps me get the word out there and in the best way uh, package. Mm -hmm. And I also have a master's in information management, which makes me uh, you know, able to collect various information and keep it and, and deliver it, to, you know, package it to, you know, to young people mm -hmm. in a format they can understand. Mm -hmm. Lydia, so what is the Teen Entrepreneur Foundation? Uh, why exactly do, do you exist? Um, what's the mission, in other words? Our mission is to instill a culture of entrepreneurship in young people. And it is important as a country, South Africa is a young country where we have had a history of um, a lot of people not really in the mainstream business. So they don't just have the skills. So it's important for us to start off with the young people and then we can pull the thread up and, mm. you know, Perfect. So, do you think that young people are, are more suited or, you know, is it the, it's the right time to basically to, to get them? Is that why you have the specific focus on teenagers? Uh, it is important for, for, you know, for young people because uh, at that age, especially the teenagers, you might ask, why do I focus on the teenagers? Mm. Because the age years, which is the 18 to about 19, that is the most creative period of any human being. That's when they start realizing who they are and they have a lot of energy and they've got a lot of creative uh, energy as well. What we are saying is that if we can harness that energy to something positive like entrepreneurship, because it's not in there, it's not, a, you know, it's a culture. And also a culture is best instilled at, young, at, at a young person mm. uh, rather than an old person. Have you tried to learn a language when you are older? I mean, it's the most difficult, but in the end, when you're young, it's natural. Yeah. So, same as I mean, we, we look at also people like, even in sports, we look at people like Nadal, who mm -hmm. won the French Open yesterday. I mean, do you think if you were to give him a racket now and say, start playing, do you think you'll be able to do this? You know, it's those kind of things, including entrepreneurship, where we say that it's important whilst we're still young to get all these skills uh, with them as well. Fantastic. So, on that topic, do you think there's indeed currently a, a, a culture of entrepreneurship among the South African teens? At the moment, uh, it's possibly non-existent. It's there in bits and pieces uh, and some other. I mean, I'm not the only one working with that. There are people like the junior achievers working also within, uh, within that same age group. So, but we know that they don't have that culture. There's a big of a skills gap. You know, they're, they're learning math, science, and all that. But to really see 
how those things can be channeled into something else, that's very different. So in terms of uh, uh, South Africa, South African teens having uh, entrepreneurial skills, that's really non-existent, you mm -hmm. know, at the moment. If they, you know, if there is, it will be 0.00% of the 18 million young people currently in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So the need is big and it's, it's, it's urgent. Okay, okay. So... What do you think would be some of the, you know, the challenges then uh, facing some of our existing or our potential teen entrepreneurs at this stage in this country? Uh, at the moment, it's mainly the skills gap. Yeah. Uh, they just don't have the skills. Mm. Uh, some of them don't have uh, uh, the money uh, and, and some of them just uh, don't realize the importance of that. So mm. it is important as, as a country or as a, as a nation to sort of focus and say this why you are learning all this and why you're doing all this there is where you can use your meds creatively if you start introducing entrepreneurship at a young age and they know that they've got to trade clearly they are going to be more enthusiastic when it's a meds lesson mm -hmm. if you tell them that they do this and you know maybe it's computers they're going to be more in, inclined to learn more because they can see the practical implication of what they're learning yeah, yeah. So you would say that they need to start uh, focusing or paying attention in the maths class, the science class, and the computer class, <laughs> and then get the skills yes, attention. Whatever they are doing, because they can always you know that into into their business. Some of them, you know, obviously we try also at that age to harness their passion, their the talent, their skills. So this, when you are still young, when you are still in touch with those what you are really good at, yeah. uh, grow up and life happens. You drop all that. Some people say, oh, I was so good at knitting, I could do it when I was, you know, closing my eyes, but I can't do it now mm. because we never developed that talent. So what we're saying is that as young people now, they've got skills, they've got talent, they're learning. Let's see how we can use those skills and turn them into a little business to thrive in one. Fantastic. Now, you, you, you briefly touched on, on funding as, as one of the challenges facing our teens, and I cannot agree with you more. Um, I think that's a challenge facing any entrepreneur in this country. I know that through your foundation, you have a, um, a, a specific program dealing with, with funding in much more detail, but what, what do you think are the basics of funding, you know, of a teenager getting funding for their fledgling business? How would they go about that? What ideas do you have for them? Yeah, at the moment, uh, you know, even as a country, uh, we don't have, um, until you're about 18, obviously, then you can, you know, you can access all, on your own the funding. But when you're young, like that, maybe you're 12 years old, or you're 10 years old, or you're 12 years old, you know, it's easy for, for you to be able to uh, appeal to your relatives, to your, to your support structure to get that kind of funding. Usually not really talking of a lot of money, uh, because, they, you know, there's, Starting small. So, okay, start where you are, ask your parents, ask your friends you know, if you've got a great idea, and also come to us. We can, you know, we do have people who come and ask us and say, Do you have young people with good ideas? And we can channel those ideas and those, uh, those, uh, those businesses to those uh, angel funders. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the sky is the limit. The money is here in South Africa for people with great ideas. So, first and foremost, uh, first and foremost is to get yourself a good idea, and we help you do that. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I cannot agree with you more. I think uh, sometimes entrepreneurs make too much of the, the funding challenge. You know, they think huge numbers, and, and whereas, you know, it's best that they start, as you said, smaller and focus on what they can build up rather than go out for the full Monty, so to speak. You know, they don't yeah. have to start big. And if I can cut you, there, money is just one element of the business. You yeah. know, they are which you need to know. They, you know, there are skills which you need to, to to have. And once you have those skills, and you can show that you do know what you're talking about, money is the you know, it, 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 you know, it can always be found. I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. So you've been doing this with the Teen Entrepreneur Foundation for a while. I'm sure you. You have some, you know, some glowing success stories of people that came through and, and you know, made it big. Uh, can you tell us about any of those? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so far, we have actually uh, trained over about 800 young kids who have come through on, uh, on our doors, on our workshop. And we do have about 50 of them running small businesses here and there. Uh, and uh, one example which I can sort of give you is that of Jamie. 
he's running, you know, he's now actually in his own league. He's already, you know, in, he's already employing other young people, which is wow. what should be. And, and it's only, I mean, he came to us when he was about 18. Now he's about 22, 23, and he's already doing that. He's such a success story. Wow. And if we have and multiply uh, uh, people like Jimmy you know, throughout this country, even if we can have 20 of them, mm. you know, that will make big a difference. I mean, we only have one Raymond Ackerman, and look at what he has done to the country. Excellent. We only have, Excellent. you know, one this and that, and look at what they've done to the country. So we need, we don't need, a, but if we can get our message through to the young people, if they've got a fast life ahead of them, so they will be able to impact them. So, so what, what does Remy do? Uh, or, I didn't hear his name properly, is it Jamie? He's into events, and also he runs a production company which already employs over 20 young people. On his events company, he employs sometimes over 100 uh, people who come in to assist. And already some big uh, person in, in town realized his potential at that young age, and it actually let him have two floors of a building in Cape Town where he will be running his show from. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's those kind of things. And people know that when you're young, you've got the energy, you've got nothing to lose, you're going to put in all yourself, and, 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 and that energy needs to be honest. Fantastic, yeah. That, that is a nice story. And I think next time you should have Jamie on your show. <laughs> I will. I'll definitely do that. So, um, do you think that there are any current opportunities or where are the current opportunities in, in, our, in our country you know, for, for young aspiring entrepreneurs? What do you think they should be looking out for? I can't wait to answer that because there's so many opportunities in South Africa. Uh, and, uh, and you can only see it when you see young people coming in from up country into our own country and seizing those quickly, those opportunities. They come here and they start running businesses. Uh, but, you know, in, in, uh, just to answer you, there's so much uh, opportunity in tourism. You know, this country is blessed with so much. There's mm. the Kruger National Park everywhere. I mean, everywhere you get to this beauty, which you can showcase and meet up your own business. There's also a, a big potential in infrastructure. I mean, uh, you might say, how can a 13-year-old yeah. uh, impact structure? But if you've got the idea and you, you can start, you know, within your own community, there's so much also a gap in education. There's so many people who are hungry. So there's a lot of opportunity in agriculture. I mean, the opportunities are vast. They are there mm -hmm. and they are there for us. And if we cannot uh, uh, instill our young people into the right frame of mind in terms of entrepreneurship, those opportunities will be for other people to take. I hear you. Absolutely. Okay, so you, through the, uh, the, the Teen Entrepreneur Foundation, um, you run a number of workshops and, and, and seminars and, and things like that to instill this culture of entrepreneurship. Um, what are those and, and what do you have currently you know, running and coming up? Uh, what we have is a fundamental course uh, which we run, which is called A Work and Design in You. Uh, business idea generation workshop because we realize that if you don't have a good idea, mm. it's no use running a business. So the first and fundamental thing is for you to create uh, how do you come up with a business idea because most people have got the money and they say, tell me what should I start off with. I mean, the idea should be from you and we, we train young people to start thinking how they can come up with business ideas. And this could be through their frustration. You know, I'm frustrated going to school because there are no buses. It means that there is need for in your in your area for transport. That is the business yet. So we and, and I'm good at writing and drawing, but what can I do? Maybe start in, in an art studio and you can see I'm good at gymming. What can I now use those energy for? Create a small gym within your street. You know, there are so many things which you can do. So we do that. And then obviously once you've got an idea. Then the business planning session comes in, the uh, marketing comes in, leadership needs to be uh, built in. So all those elements, but they start off as once you have got an idea. And we do all those sessions. We also have online resources on our on our site, uh, which people can you know buy online, and you don't need to come to us, but you can get and you can un ask us questions, and you'll be able to ask them. Okay. And, and where are you to be reached online, you know, so that they can get to your shop and buy these books and things? Okay. Uh, the shops are on, uh, okay, it's online. Uh, www.teenentrepreneur.co.sa 
you can also see us on Facebook uh, and on Twitter. So you can tweet us, you can Facebook us, and you, we also have a big opportunity for membership. Because once you are connected with us, you get more information. We can com continue to talk to you through our various platforms. Okay, so they can also uh, get a membership from Teen Entrepreneur and join as a member and get some yeah, benefits then. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Sorry, I interrupted you there. No, no, no. I just think that's definitely the way to go. Okay, okay. Lydia, this has been great. I think your your foundation is absolutely wonderful and it's it's inspiring to hear the work that you've done with our young people. Um, all the best and, and good luck forward. Thank you so much for having me, and I, and I appreciate this, uh, this opportunity to talk and to express what we are currently doing at Teen Entrepreneur Foundation. Thank you. Fantastic, thanks.